Jesus. What is that? What the f is that? What is that? They are Klingons. Those are Klingons? Wilson. Well, welcome back to Continuum Meditations Discusses. In this episode, I'd like to talk about some developments focusing on the upcoming Star Trek Discovery TV series. Specifically, I want to dive into a few different subjects relating to what I consider to be the continuing confusion that this series is shaping up to be, and some of the distraction techniques being used to get people on board Star Trek Discovery and squash the backlash that has arisen since its inception. A plethora of information came out of the recent San Diego Comic Con for 2017, and it is from here that a host of details were gleaned regarding Discovery that have led to further insights about what was and is happening behind the scenes to make Discovery into what it's shaping up to be. And using some of those revelations, I want to explore a little bit of that backdrop. Now, as I began the video with the new Klingons, as I'm calling them, of Star Trek Discovery, let's continue by first talking about them. We have already seen from multiple sources that these Klingons are a broad physical departure from the Klingons of yore, be they the Klingons from the original series, Star Trek The Next Generation, Deep Space Nine, Voyager, or the host of Trek movie Klingons that we have seen basically from 1979 to 2002. And we have seen many apologists spring up in the interim trying to tell us why the new Klingons are justifiable within the existing Star Trek canon, or alternatively, why we should simply be optimistic and just sit back and wait for an explanation of why they are the way they are, and simply disregard what our own eyes tell us in light of the evidence of more than 30 years of Trek film and television history. But it is not my purpose yet to rehash the old, these Klingons aren't the real Klingons argument in this video. Right now what I want to do is talk about a new angle of dysfunction I see popping up in Star Trek Discovery in light of the new revelations that we have recently received from Discovery's creators. In an article published by TrekMovie.com, Star Trek Discovery concept creators Gretchen Berg, Aaron Harberts, and executive producer Heather Caden offered up new insight into how the new Klingons, as I'm calling them, will be portrayed in the upcoming series. Aaron Harberts stated that, quote, the Klingons are not necessarily the Russians anymore. The Klingons are a people in the United States and different factions in the United States, unquote. He went on to say, or he said in order, should I say, quote, we are also talking about not only war, but something that is really bubbling up in the United States right now, isolationism." Unquote. Now what intrigues me about these statements is how we are supposed to perceive the new Klingons of Star Trek Discovery versus those we have seen for the last 50 years. Now as many of you who are seasoned Star Trek fans know, the Klingons always represented the standoff between the former Soviet Union and the Western Alliance as it was then led by the United States during the height of the Cold War. And just as international communism at that time was an expansionist imperialistic force bent on world domination, the Klingons of the classic Star Trek TV and movie years were also an imperialistic expansionist force bent on galactic domination. This was certainly true of the original series 1960s Klingons, and it was a meme that was largely continued through the representation of the 1979 motion picture Klingons, the 1980s movies Klingons, all the way to the late 1980s when the next generation began to make a shift in this outlook to reflect the real world closing of the Cold War that continued into the early 1990s. Now, this change was personified in the character of Lieutenant Worf from the TNG era, through the rapprochement that was created between the Klingon Empire and the Federation in Star Trek VI, The Undiscovered Country, and the run of Star Trek Deep Space Nine. However, in Star Trek Discovery, the new Klingons are not the Russians, as we have been told. Instead, what we are told is that they are a representation of the United States of today, a United States that is retreating from world leadership and the international order that it helped to create after the Second World War of 1939 to 1945. At least this is what those behind Star Trek Discovery would have us believe. And if we are to look deeper into the statements of Harberts, Berg, and Caden, the new Klingons are not just a depiction of supposed American isolationism in the current environment, but potentially at least a stand-in for the alleged intolerance permeating throughout the United States in the era of Donald J. Trump. 
even though Mr. Trump himself is not personally mentioned in any of these statements. Now, whatever one thinks of the current president of the United States, it must be quite disconcerting to those who believe in a more liberal world order such as was represented under former President Barack Obama to suddenly see a United States led by an administration that wants to regress U.S. absorption into the new world order that has been under construction since the end of 1945, again a new world order that the United States itself took the lead in building, but what is interesting to me is that from a fictional Star Trek vantage point it intrigues me to see that what was formerly this has in fact been inverted into this. But the real question is, is this new zeitgeist a correct one? In a time in which all 17 United States intelligence agencies have unanimously agreed that the Russian Federation interfered in the 2000 American presidential electoral process, in a time in which the international community has roundly condemned that same Russian Federation for its illegal interventions into Georgia and in the Ukraine, and in a time in which the current Donald Trump administration has gone out of its way to flatly deny any evidence of Russian meddling in either U.S. domestic affairs or those of foreign nations, none of which the former Obama administration denied, is it proper for the leaders of the new Star Trek Discovery series to suddenly, and quite without any historical justification, transform the former enemy of Starfleet and the Federation into their polar opposite representation in the real world. And this is particularly noteworthy given the time frame in which Star Trek Discovery has been set, and thus I must honestly question whether this is more evidence of a Star Trek television series that is not only conceived by people disconnected from real world history, but who are resolutely determined to reboot and rewrite Star Trek history in their own image in order to suit their own fanciful worldviews. But again, I leave that for you to decide. Now let's talk about a, another subject that I wanted to briefly dive into, uh, one that I found particularly interesting that was coming out of a recent issue of Entertainment Weekly that is in fact showcasing the new Star Trek Discovery series. The article that I'm going to be referencing, and you will see it in the video, is from The Telegraph. The article is dated July 28, 2017, so about a couple of days ago as I'm recording this video. The headline of the article is, New Star Trek Series Confirms There Is No God in the Trek Universe. Now let me read a little bit of this to you. Buried in an Entertainment Weekly story on the upcoming series Star Trek Discovery is an anecdote that sheds light on whether religion exists in the Star Trek universe. And here, of course, we are referencing the latest issue of Entertainment Weekly with its three separate covers of the new Star Trek Discovery crew. We go on with the article. During filming, British actor Jason Isaacs, who portrays the ship Discovery's Captain Gabriel Lorca, ad-libbed the line, For God's sake only for the episode's writer to stop filming and correct him. Wait, I can't say God, Isaacs is reported to have said. I thought I could say God or damn, but not God damn. Kirsten Beyer, the episode's writer, then explained to Isaacs that Star Trek creator Gene Roddenberry specifically said his creation in a future where religion no longer exists. Now let's stop right there. Because we know that Gene Roddenberry was an atheist, or at the very least, he was an agnostic. But I want to correct not only this writer who stopped Jason Isaac for say from saying for God's sake, but I also want to stop this apparently very ignorant writer of this article for The Telegraph who did not seem to know what he or she was saying about this particular subject either, at least not as it refers, as it is being referenced, that is, in the Star Trek universe. Now, Gene Roddenberry may have been a hardcore atheist, or perhaps just an, uh, an agnostic, but either way, this did not stop him from testing the idea of the supernatural in either the original series or the next generation while he remained alive. And whatever your personal predilections for or against religion or spirituality may be, Star Trek has always been more or less even-tempered in approaching the subject. And this is rung true from the days of classic Star Trek onward. 
In fact, the classic Trek dealt with it more than once, and specifically with respect to Christianity in the episode Bread and Circuses. The next generation accepted the reality of organized religion at the very least, and even mentioned the notion of a celebration of the Hindu festival of lights in the episode Data's Day. And as many veteran Trekkies know, also, the exploration of organized religion and spiritual faith reaches its zenith expression during the run of Star Trek Deep Space Nine, when Starfleet sends Benjamin Sisko to the Bajoran homeworld to negotiate Bajor's entrance into the Federation. Now it's here that we learn that Sisko is the long-awaited emissary to the Prophets foretold of by ancient Bajoran seers. The Prophets, for all intents and purposes, are gods to the Bajoran people, whom they worship and around whom the Bajorans have formed a very sophisticated and complex religion. Now all of this smacks in the face of everything that is being said by these very ignorant people, these both the writer of the article and the writer of the episode who interrupted actor Jason Isaacs. Now I'm fully aware, by way of contrast, that Star Trek has also taken to task the idea of organized religion in various episodes and incarnations throughout the series. One of the most poignant examples that comes to my mind instantly is the Star Trek The Next Generation episode, Who Watches the Watchers, which is also conveniently ref referenced by the Telegraph article that I was reading from. And if you want to cite any particular episode that is, I would say, not abject, abjectly or openly hostile to religion, but is uh, openly supremely skeptical of the role religion plays in any organized society, then who watches the watchers and some of the very, um, uh, how would you say, some of the very point, pointed uh, statements made by Captain Picard would be a very, very uh, straightforward example of that from the standpoint of Star Trek's writers and perhaps more importantly from the standpoint of Star Trek's creator. What does this have to do with Star Trek Discovery? Well, it's very simple. What I'm showing you by way of contrast is that Star Trek has in fact explored, tolerated, and accepted the fact that religion exists even into the 24th century. And if it is not specifically and ubiquitously practiced on Earth, then at the very least it is recognized and practiced within various alien cultures encountered by Starfleet. Okay. So this entire notion that the new Star Trek Discovery creators have of the idea that a transcendent deity or deities is somehow anathema to Star Trek is absurd. And it once again makes me wonder whether the custodians of this new Trek series have even one bloody clue about what it is they're doing. And I'm chalking this up to another question mark or check mark in my doubts column about the strength of this series. But there's another thing that must be asked. On the other side of this issue must be entertained the question of does this kind of heavy-handed dismissal of even the idea of a deity represent a new level of intolerance that may be coming our way from those who are responsible for this series. Now what do I mean by that? Well. We have clearly seen that Star Trek Discovery will feature its requisite share of racial and sexual minorities, and based upon this, we can reasonably conclude that it will be, that is, the series will be dedicated to the fundamental Star Trek philosophy of diversity and inclusion, and that philosophy is manifestly declared within the Star Trek universe as IDIC, or Infinite Diversity in Infinite Combination. However, let's think about this, y'all. The slap down at religious faith that was articulated by this writer Kirsten Beyer, whether it was out of ignorance or whether it was out of some covert prejudice, begs one ask the question of whether or not that infinite diversity in infinite combination only applies to those of a certain select participants within the new Star Trek universe and not to everyone. And it is on that question that I state unequivocally that I don't care whether you believe in a, in, a, in a deity or not, or in organized religion or not, but if we are to claim that we are expressing the basic Star Trek ideal, that it is the differences that indeed make us strong, as Captain Picard once said, 
that we are in fact willing to be tolerant of philosophies that deviate from our own, whether we be atheists or whether we be theists, then we cannot arbitrarily and callously discount the role that spiritual faith has played in the upward march of the human experience, even when we care not for the notion of spirituality or religion ourselves. And this even applies if Gene Roddenberry himself was a secret, rabid, frothing at the mouth atheist who was hostile to the whole concept of God or, the, or of religious experience. So I would ask the creators of Star Trek Discovery to indulge with caution this, what seems to be anyway, at least from this particular writer, this underground covert contempt for religion, which this particular writer has expressed with these sentiments. You may begin to recognize that if you keep something like that up and if you do it, especially if you do it with open hostility and open malice, that you may offend more people than you think you may offend just because this is a show that is based on science and technology does not mean that there are people out here who do not have the idea that there is something beyond the mere physical and the mere mundane laws of nature.